Team Manhattan Equestrian and we are going to show you some pole work how-tos. So lots of my customers don't have loads of poles or there's like rules on how many they're allowed to get out and stuff so we've come up with five exercises which you can do with just four poles. So I'm setting up the first one as we speak and I will show you how to ride them. So we have got a pole set up they're down just so they're just the either side of the centre line um, and we are going to be able to use 10 metre circles around these poles. We're also going to use our poles as a slow marker so when we ride through them we can come on a downwards transition or an upwards transition if we want to. Um, we also can use these on a 20 metre circle. I have spaced my poles because I'm riding Milo today who's our five year old. We're looking to just build a bit of push and a little bit, a little bit more loose and a bigger stride. So I have set my poles out as one and a half. If you're unsure about striding, and I know lots of people ask me, well, well how many do I need? Don't worry, we've got a video coming to you soon. So get on our um, YouTube, subscribe, like us, and then keep an eye out for the next video coming. Okay, so up to you what you're riding. Obviously the smaller the horse or smaller the step, or you might be thinking about closing down their work a little bit more, then bring them a little bit closer together. But for me, I want to open Milo up, so I've set a, a wider pole. So it's all set up, so I'm going to go and tuck up and give it a go. Okay, so we've got the first exercise um, out, and we're going to give it a little go. Milo's had a little warm up. Um, so he's never done any of these exercises before, so you are riding every moment with me. I'm going to try and explain to you what I'm doing whilst I'm doing it, so let's see what he makes of it. Okay, so the first bit of this exercise to practice is just being able to ride a centre line. Now obviously I'm riding a five year old, <laughs> so centre lines are not our strong point. Okay, so I've done the first bit, this bit. I'm going to introduce some circles. So I'm going to slow the trot, bring them around on the turn. Obviously, if I was riding somebody a little bit more experienced, I'd ride them a little bit more forwards. Good boy. Change my diagonal, so I'm ready, and I'm going to go right next time. Ooh. Good boy. Round. Right. And then I'm now going to go left. Good boy. Good boy. Good lad. Okay, so now I'm going to go for my circle. It's not quite 20 metres, but that's fine. Just going to bring him off the turn. Keep my truck big. Nice soft rain over the poles so you can stretch. Good boy. Keeping a small amount of inside flexion. Good lad. Going to give a little change of rain. Give it a go the other way. Okay, so I'm going to come through the top poles and try and ask for a halt. This is not our forte. I'm going to come round the corner. I'm going to hold this trot in a nice slow rhythm. Sit, wait in my feet. Whoa. Good boy. Good lad. Right, I'm going to wait for him just to relax in front. Here we go, and then pop to trot. Good boy. Just stay sitting there for a couple of beats just to secure the trot before I start the rising. So now I can come around this corner, nice and balanced, good boy. Okay, so this is exercise number two, and this is what I call the shark's teeth. If you've done any pole work with me, you know I really like this exercise. Um, I think it's a little bit better personally um, than just your standard trot poles in a straight line. Um, I think it helps with feet placement, makes them a little bit more aware as they're coming through the poles. Um, so these I've set up as one and a quarter for Milo. Um, when they're on an angle, first thing to note is you should be measuring through the middle of your um, distance um, because you want to be riding in the middle and obviously where some of the poles are angled this is really important that you, you keep straight and that you set your distance middle to middle. Um, so I've made it slightly shorter than the poles in the first exercise because I want him to place his feet and then step up over the poles to help with a little bit of elevation and again pushing that his push comes a little bit more forward, a little bit higher. So this is how I've got this exercise and we'll go and see what he makes of it. Okay, so this exercise, we're gonna come round, gonna stay in a rhythm, soft rein, hips up, trying to look forwards, hold my straight line. 
and just stay in the middle. So third exercise of the day, I have set this up. This is a canter exercise for Milo, but don't worry, you can do it and walk and trot. So if you're not ready for canter yet, you can do it any any um, pace. So this can take exercise for Milo because I want to improve his flying changes. Some rains and some times we're really good. One rain we're more, you know, better than the other. But I have got three poles here. They're all down the centre line. Now I've got a little top tip for you because this wouldn't be a video without that. And um, if you look in my middle pole, I put two poles together. Now this is on purpose. This is to help. Milo, have a little look, put a little bit more effort into it in the canter and therefore give me a little bit more elevation on the floor, making that flying change a little bit easier. So if your horse isn't used to flying changing yet, is learning um, or just struggles with changing behind, it's a really nice way to just help them lift off the floor. Hopefully it works um, and we'll, we'll show you. Okay, coming around to my pole. Good, keep moving out my outside leg. Good. See my shot. Go for my change. Go ahead, settle, 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 settle. Good boy. Good lad. Full for exercise. You can see here I've got two lots of V poles. For me, this is another canter exercise for Milo, but again, you can do it in walk and trot, so you know you don't need to worry about having to canter if you don't want to. So I'm sure lots of you have seen this exercise before, but I've just customised it a little bit. So you can have poles in a straight line, and I'm going to basically play with how many strides I get. So I've got the V pole to help me just stay a bit straighter, so that's the difference between having that pole. I can measure how straight I am, just like if I was jumping a big cross, for instance. So I'm going to come around my corner, try and stay in a level canter. So for me, it's not about shortening with Milo. For me, it's about staying level down to the next um, set of V poles. But for other people, if your horse falls on, you can do this a shortening exercise or the opposite, you can do a lengthening exercise if that's better. Um, also, another top tip is if your horse is uncareful at a pole or you feel that it gets too close, pull your bees in a little bit tighter and um, so I've got mine quite loose, but pull your bee in a little bit tighter. You're going to help with that feet placement, placement and you're just going to draw them away from that corner, okay? But for me, Milo generally, will see, doesn't seem to get too close to his poles. He's pretty careful. So I'm going to keep a wider V just to work on that straightness. Coming around the corner. Good boy. Set it up. Good boy. Okay. One more. I would like good boy, to do it again. Oh, goodness me. I would like to do it again because I had a straighter approach, but I just didn't stride to the second part. Good boy. Straight, straight. Oh, Jesus. Lovely. Good boy. Last exercise, exercise number five. So this is our cross in the middle of the school. It's really simple to set up. You can't get it wrong. Put all the ends together on X in the middle of your school. We can do, change the rain over it. We can think about coming straight. I can practice my center lines. Not only that, I can use this as a really good exercise for my flying changes again. Like I said on all the other exercises, this can be done in walk, trot or canter. But for me, I want to improve my changes. So I'm going to practice coming round on a half 20 metre circle, popping my change in and then going for my other half 20 metre circle. And I can continue to do this till I feel I need to come back, settle the canter and come again. Another top tip is if you are trying to practice your flying changes and you feel that you're not getting enough elevation or you're getting in front but not behind, a really good idea is to prop up your poles so using a polypod or some people use potties prop, pop them up so you just get a little bit of elevation so as you're coming over the middle you can pop that change in without having too much the other things you can use is the smaller poly box and um, but you just need to be aware where you're propping the poles but give that a go and i'm sure it'll help okay so we've got our trot exercise here over the cross you can do it in trot first let him have a little look. Good oh boy. Good lad. Good. Round off the corner. Nice. 
nice and middle. Middle. Good boy. All right, let's give it a go and canter. Let's hope it's as good as that. This is the first time he's ever done anything like this. We'll see. Miss my shot, but good. Settle. Good boy. My hand off my corner. Three, two. Oh, that was good. Well, I don't think I could have asked any more of Milo. It's first time doing. He doesn't do too much pole work, so I'm really impressed by his gone today and um, if you have any questions about the exercises drop us a comment below or if you just enjoyed it let us know um, any questions i'll answer them to my best of my ability please like and finally please can you subscribe because it really helps us um, and we'll look forward to seeing you on our next video